Well, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. We had a couple days of thawing weather out, and now we're kind of back to cold temperatures again in the teens. Just got another four inches of snow out there. It was a good opportunity for the edge tamers today. Just a quick little cleanup out there. But today I kind of want to go over a video I did a couple weeks ago, and it involved me getting stuck with the tractor in the snow. I've got a long history of being stuck in the mud and in the snow. Left a lot of questions in the comments section and also a lot of comments and constructive criticism in the comments section. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the comments and a little bit of the history of me being stuck throughout the years. So let's start with a comment. Okay, Karate Joe asks, why do I leave the backhoe on? And I don't normally like to leave the backhoe on when I'm plowing snow. The ideal situation for me is to just use my box blades. It's not gonna be a lot of weight on the back. It gives me a little bit of ballast. But I had the backhoe on because of the cab that I put on recently. And there were a lot of questions about the cab and how did it fit with the backhoe when you're sitting in the seat, how much room do you have? And so I put the backhoe on for that particular reason, but we've got snow in the meantime. I didn't really wanna take it off and I wanted to still be able to clean up our snow. I would prefer not to have the backhoe on when I do snow because <laughs> I think the backhoe is a little too much weight and it takes away from the steering up front. I got a comment from Christopher who said, how could you even think of putting a strap around the loader stand and try to use that to pull yourself out when you were stuck? And my thought was I was gonna use the path of least resistance and I was gonna just see if I was gonna be able to move this tractor with a little bit of help from my pickup truck. And I was just wondering if I needed a little bit of a boost to get unstuck. And I'll go back to last year, I was doing the neighbor's drive. They got stuck towards the end of the street. Their car was stuck by the apron where all the snow gets piled up. And I went and got my tow strap. I didn't have a lot of weight on my tractor. I didn't have any ballast in the back. And I was thinking, well, maybe they just need a little bit of extra help of getting their car out. So I hooked the tow strap up. And lo and behold, it didn't take much to get them unstuck. Same thing applies when I had stone delivered and the stone truck driver got his truck stuck. His wheels came off the ground and he had no traction on the left side and his tires were just spinning. And he was going to call a tow truck driver to have him pulled out. And I'm thinking, man, this is just turning into a big can of worms. And I said, look, before you even call a tow truck driver, let me try just pushing with my tractor. Maybe just a little bit of help is all you need. And lo and behold, I used the bucket on the back part of his bumper, gave him a little push, and he got out. Another thing happened earlier this year with the UPS driver where he kind of went over our driveway the wrong way and his tire went off the edge of the bridge a little bit and he was down to his frame. And same thing, they were gonna call for a tow truck. And I said, hey, let me just see if I can give you a little help. And sure enough, we got him out without having to get a tow truck. So my thought was just to see if I could just get a little bit of help from my pickup truck and maybe that would give me the effort I need to get out. Very gently go forward. Stop. When I saw that the frame moved a little bit and the tractor did not move at all, I pretty much called it quits and knew that I was gonna have to do something different. Then I took that strap, tied it up, and put it onto the right side of the tractor. So that was my thinking there. I knew I was gonna put a lot of pressure on this thing because I know you can't, but I just thought, well, if I get just a little bit, maybe it'll get out. Another comment I got was from Steve Moss, who said, get rid of the toe strap and get yourself a recovery strap. So all right, brother, this is for you. Check it out. I have another one that's shorter, but it was too short to use for this instance of being stuck in the snow, but now this is 30 feet long, so this will help out. And another person left a comment describing the way to use one of these straps is to basically you want to thread this into your square of your hitch on the truck and then put your pin in and use that to not wrap this around the ball of your hitch. So great comments. Another little tool that I have, hopefully next time I get stuck, I remember that I got it hanging up somewhere. Another comment from Herman Gong. He said, it doesn't look like I was in four wheel drive when I was trying to get out. He didn't see the front tire spinning. And I noticed that in the video too, but I definitely had it engaged. 
And I have a question. If you know the answer, please leave it in the comments. But I went out and I did a little experiment afterwards just to kind of see to make sure that I still was engaging in a four-wheel drive. So I took JD ice skating on some of the ice we have in the driveway. Okay, I'm going to do two different views. One is the left, one is the right. I reversed one so the tires remain on the same side of the screen. Two-wheel drive, no diff lock. Two-wheel drive with the differential lock on. I definitely can tell that the diff lock is on. I can see both wheels spinning simultaneously. My question is, is if you have the diff lock on and if you're in four-wheel drive, should the front tires also be locked and every tire spin? Four-wheel drive, no differential lock on. And finally, four-wheel drive with the diff lock on. Just a little test because I was concerned if I was going into four-wheel drive. It does look like the front tires are spinning. Occasionally one spins and the other one doesn't when the diff lock is on. So if anybody has insight on that, I would appreciate it. This probably isn't the most scientific. I am on a sheet of ice and traction does have something to do with it. One comment was from a gentleman with the initials BS. Not sure what that stands for. Not sure if it's a commentary on my videos or not. But he made a comment saying that it's a shame that I had the cab on because it'd be harder for me to reach over and control the backhoe while trying to pull myself out. And I could still do that. I just didn't want to take the window out at the time. It was uh, pretty chilly out. For the folks that just have the one seat in the back coast on some of the older models, like 2017 and before, I'm sure it's probably easier to hit these controls. But I can still lean over and, and reach them if I needed to. I could not hit the stabilizers, but I can still get the two um, joysticks this on top. Warren said in this particular instance of me being stuck, couldn't I have used the backhoe to dig the teeth into the ground and use the backhoe to start pushing me out? And I don't think so. Not in this instance. I was on such a sharp angle. I was really worried about the tractor tipping over. And sometimes when you're using the backhoe to move yourself, you kind of put the backhoe up on a, a teeter-totter type of instance. And that was one thing that I thought if I was going to try to lift myself out, that I would probably dump myself over. Now somebody did make a comment and said maybe I should have took the backhoe and just angled it to the one side on the downhill side where I was stuck and put pressure on that side and see if I would have more pressure on the uphill side to spin the tires and get out. And that would probably take a little bit of coordination to, I'd have to control the backhoe and be sitting in the driver's seat at the same time. Cul-de-sac Defender said it's pretty hard to get stuck with a loader and a backhoe. And I don't know, I've gotten stuck quite a few times and I've got both. I know one time I got stuck in the spring a couple years ago, I was digging a trench for a culvert pipe that I put in. I basically backed myself into a corner and tried to get out through a creek area and it just got worse and worse and worse. There was just no way of using the backhoe. In fact, sometimes I think the backhoe being so heavy on the back just digs you into the ground when those tires are spinning. And one thing I did notice throughout the videos when I start looking back at how I got stuck is that once those tires start to spin and you go forward a little bit and you go backwards a little bit and you're just spinning your tires, 
you should probably just stop and try not to do anything and think this through and that spinning your tires is just going to make it worse from this point on and you're going to have to figure out a different plan. So if you have the loader, then you could try using the loader. Sometimes I don't have the loader attached, I may have another attachment attached. In one particular instance I was starting to get stuck and I had my brush crusher on and I was still able to use the brush crusher to help me get unstuck before things got too, too terribly bad. And in another instance, that was just a couple weeks ago, where I was cleaning out our chicken coop, and I always fill up the loader with chicken poop and, and, and the bedding that's inside the chicken coop. I pull the tractor right next to it, I can shovel it right out, it makes it nice and easy, and then I can take the tractor and go over to the garden area and dump it into the garden this time of year. Well, I went and did that, but we still had some pretty thick snow in the yard, and I got stuck. And now my loader's full of chicken poop, and that would probably have been the best way for me to get unstuck, but I don't want to dump chicken poop in the middle of my front yard. I was spinning my tires, and I ended up having to use the same method of just getting my outriggers out, putting a couple boards underneath the outriggers, and got free. Certain instances where you're not always going to be able to use your loader, and most people don't have a backhoe. Uh, I think 17% of the people that buy the 1025R buy it with a backhoe. Most everybody else, they don't purchase with a backhoe. Most of the 1025Rs out there um, just have the loader. Now there were some comments about come-alongs and maybe putting a winch on the front. And I have used a come-along in the past. That time when I was digging my culvert pipe in that trench, I did a little bit of both. I had to use the outriggers to get myself out of being deeply stuck and then I was still in some really soft areas of our yard uh, on our property and I had to use a come along to just get us out of that area. And I've also been fortunate enough where I've gotten stuck that I've had trees nearby and I've been able to use that with a come along. Uh, a lot of people get stuck in the middle of a farm field and there's nothing and it's not like you're going to bring another vehicle to the rescue because you'll probably get that vehicle stuck. The first time I got stuck, I was a newbie and I was probably not aggressive enough when I was using the loader. I probably should have put more pressure and also took the front wheels off the ground a little bit and that probably would have propelled me a little bit better. But I gave it a couple of tries with the loader and the soil was kind of loose and it just wasn't working in that instance. But uh, eventually I got out using the backhoe and I got a lot of comments at that time about using the backhoe in that way but it did help. It would have been the same principle as digging the teeth down into the ground, but basically I wrapped the chain around the bucket and then strapped that chain around the tree. So that's a little bit of my history of being stuck and some of the reasons why I did certain things to get unstuck. Um, not all situations are gonna be the same and not all situations seem as easy as they are when you're watching it on the video, but I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy these videos and subscribe and keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.